teacher or family member who is helped by a first responder. Life insurance offers these everyday heroes a little something extra, like discounts to help those who help others. If you're a teacher, preacher, first responder, active military, a state or federal employee, see what Alpha can do for you. The water level may be down, but that doesn't mean it's not a great time to consider selling your lake home, acreage, or condo, as it's worth more money now than ever before, as there are far more buyers than there are homes available. Ask yourself, how much money am I leaving on the table, and why am I trying to do this alone, when I can call Century 21 Lake Area Realty and get more for my property than what it's worth and let them do all the work. Hi, I'm Rhonda Gaskin, Century 21 Lake Area Realty. We're ready to jump in and do the work for you. Call 256-825-4800. No, 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 wrong! Bring it in, guys! Take any. Let's go over this again. Who starts off with a real Coke taste? Coca-Cola! And then Coca-Cola pitches the real Coke taste to who? Coca-Cola! How is Coca-Cola gonna give real Coke taste to itself? Take a lap, genius! Coca-Cola takes a snap and then pitches the real Coke taste to Coke Zero running up on the right. You got it? Yeah! At that point, we fake punt the real Coke taste. Who fakes the punt? Coke, 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 Coke Zero! Zero. Oh. Take a lap! Coke Zero! Real Coke taste! Zero calories! The following is a presentation of the Alabama High School Athletic Association and the AHSAA Radio Network. Celebrating 10 years of covering Alabama's favorite Friday pastime, high school football. This is the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Heard on great radio stations all over Alabama and featuring live reports from experts around the state. If it's happening in high school football, we cover it. Presented by Main Street Family Care, Southeastern Land Group, Russell Dewitt Centers, Southern Union State Community College, Cross Country Mortgage, Thompson Tractor, the Alabama Department of Transportation, and by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Now, let's get into some football. Celebrating 10 years, this is the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. We are live across the state of Alabama. I am Jay Jeffcoat. He is Andy Graham. Luke Robinson is off tonight. It is our final show of the 10th season, and uh, this will be show number 14 for the year, Andy. Hard to believe it's already here. The, the season has flown by. There ain't no question about it. Yeah, and uh, we are here at the quarterfinal round for 1 through 6A and the semifinal round uh, for 7A tonight. No funny business tonight from the Thompson Warriors. You know, a lot of people speculated what would have happened in that first game uh, when Connor Harrell, the outstanding quarterback at Thompson, went went down at halftime and uh, was not able to play in the second half. Missed a couple of games uh, after that as well. I think three mm -hmm. uh, after that. And a lot of people speculated, would that have made a difference in the second half against Hoover the first time? Safe to say from tonight's um, results that it very well may have. Could have. I mean, I don't think that Thompson was quite as dominant in those games as they had been previously. But, it, it, you know, it just they always say, I don't, you know, it's hard to beat a team twice in the same year. The, but you were right. We were talking earlier. It looked like Thompson was playing angry in this game. Yeah. And that blemish on their record, you know, I think that got – that that meant something to them, yeah. and they came into this game with uh, an attitude, and, and clearly they were the better team tonight. Uh, Thompson uh, certainly uh, uh, certainly came in with a point to make uh, in tonight's festivities. In the southern half of seven a interesting game as Auburn's up on Central Phoenix City seventeen fourteen. They were actually up seventeen uh, seven at one point in that game. Auburn scores to make it seventeen fourteen, and then uh, Central Phoenix City then. Uh, goes on a on a quick scoring spree to make it twenty eight to seventeen. That included a fumble recovery in the end zone for a touchdown. And uh, Central Phoenix City is going to represent the South in Birmingham. Yeah, you know Auburn uh, had been playing, I think, their best football as of late. And uh, defensively, they are an extremely impressive team. But uh, offensively, Central Phoenix City is a very very impressive team. And I I think obviously that one out 
tonight. I mean, you know, they, they held them down early. But Caleb Nix running the football looked like it was a big part of this uh, win for the Red Devils. And not only that, it'll give us a chance to start kind of setting up that uh, Thompson and Central Phoenix City uh, matchup uh, coming up in Birmingham here in about a week and a half. But uh, it's going to be a really fun game. It's one of those – I talked to somebody last night, and they said, well, they said Thompson's probably going to win it, right? I said, I, keep your eye on Central Phoenix City. And keep and Just keep an eye on Central Phoenix City because if they get there, they're the kind of team that can give Thompson some trouble uh, because they're very efficient offensively. Defensively, they're, they're uber talented. This is a, um, it's a team that – Maybe doesn't get as much coverage as others, but certainly a team that can do some damage. With that being said, let's get to our first scores on the fours of this final show of the year. It's brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles, nearly 100 years in the making. From our grandma's kitchen to yours, Andy, you have the 7A bracket before you now. I do as well. I do, in fact. Uh, it is Central Phoenix City uh, defeating Auburn. This one at uh, Red Devil Stadium there, 28 to 17, as we were just talking about earlier, of course, Auburn, uh, with an early lead in that game, but Central came storming back to take care of that one, 28 to 17. The Thompson Warriors over the Hoover Bucks in a rematch from a game earlier this year. Thompson wins 35 to 10 in this one. It was 35 to 3, I think, at the half. So uh, it right. just, it, you know, it was all Thompson, all. Uh, early and it stayed that way. They just kind of held on uh, for the rest of the game. But so we'll have Central Phoenix City and Thompson in the championship of seven. In the six A quarterfinals tonight, we'll start on the north side. There will be no repeat champion in six A. Last year's champion Pinson Valley is shut out tonight by Mountain Brook. Final score there. 30 to nothing. Mountain Brook gets the win. They'll move on to face Clay Chalkville. Had a feeling there might be points scored in this Clay Chalkville Gardendale game. Clay Chalkville gets the win 50 to 44. On the south side, it was Hillcrest over Sarah Land 24 to 10. And a bit of a surprise at margin anyway here. We wondered if Opelika's defense could hold uh, Hueytown's scoring machine down. Did not happen. Hueytown gets the win 46 to 10 over Opelika. So in the semifinals next week, it'll be Mountain Brook, Clay Chalkville, and Hillcrest and Hueytown. That scores on the four is brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles, Players of the Week, and Inside the AHSAA next. Hey, it's Brett Pritchard, and I'm here to tell you all about Sims Foods, who you know better as Wickles Pickles. Wickles Pickles, that 90-year-old recipe, Wickedly Delicious, Relish, Okra, and Pickles. From Saturday sandwiches, tailgate snacks, to holiday dinners with your family and friends. From their family to yours, Wickles Pickles, those wickedly delicious pickles. Wickles Pickles, wickedly delicious pickles. Alabama Power first generated hydro energy in 1914 at Lay Dam, harnessing the power of water to bring electricity to our state. Today, more than a century later, Lay Dam is one of 14 Alabama Power hydro plants that provides Alabamians clean, reliable, affordable energy with zero emissions. And it's one more way we're helping elevate Alabama. Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. Main Street Family Urgent Main Street Family Care is now offering COVID-19 vaccinations to eligible patients at all clinics seven days a week. At this time, COVID-19 vaccines are available to healthcare workers who meet certain criteria. Vaccine criteria and an interest form for those who are currently ineligible for the vaccine can be found at www.mainstreetfamilycare.com slash COVID-19 vaccine. Okay, somebody's not wearing their seatbelt. I don't wear seat belts. Might wrinkle my shirt. That's okay. I'm sure they can iron it before the funeral. What funeral? Yours. Almost 70% of people who die in car crashes aren't wearing a seat belt. Okay. Okay. There. You happy? 
just happy to be alive. Seatbelts, it's hard to live without them. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. The taste of the South starts out here. However you roll into work, you can bring the flavor with Jack's Breakfast Catering. Huge scratch-made buttermilk biscuits and hearty breakfast sandwiches, mixed or matched, starting at just $15. Don't forget to add delicious fresh ground Royal Cup coffee and classic breakfast sides. Because great work starts with great breakfast. Breakfast catering, starting at $15 from Jack's. All about the South. It's time for your AHSAA Athletes of the Week, presented by Main Street Family Care. Quality care close to home. Your AHSAA Male Athlete of the Week is Khalifa Keith from A.H. Parker High School. He had 400 all-purpose yards and six touchdowns, including 275 yards rushing with five touchdowns and also caught a touchdown pass in Parker's win over Alexandria. Your AHSAA Female Athlete of the Week is Brianna Adams from Satsuma High School. She had 12 points, 13 rebounds, four blocks, and three steals in Satsuma's 42-21 win over Alberta last week. And your AHSAA Athlete of the Week is Titus Caves from Jackson High School. He had 10 carries for 211 yards and a touchdown and added two receptions for 45 yards and a touchdown in the Aggies' win over St. James last week. That's your AHSAA Athletes of the Week, presented by Main Street Family Care. Quality care close to home. Time now for our Inside the AHSAA segment, brought to you by the Alabama Department of Transportation, who reminds you to buckle up and drive safe, Alabama. Ben Thomas joining us now, and uh, we talk a little bit about what's going on this week. Ben, first of all, how you doing, my friend? Man, I'm doing great. Uh, getting down to cases here. Only a couple of weeks left, and we'll be in the Super Seven. So uh, narrowing that field down some more tonight. Yeah, and it's pretty uh, pretty exciting too. Super Seven coming up in a couple of weeks, and uh, it's going to be a protective life stadium in Birmingham. I'm pretty excited to see it. I know a lot of other people are too. Yeah, I'm excited to get up there. I mean, I haven't seen the stadium. I hadn't even been. I can't remember the last time I've been in Birmingham. I mean, obviously, I was there probably for the state basketball last year. It was the last time I was I was in and around there. I, so the stadium was under construction there, but I haven't seen the finished project. I'm looking forward to getting up there. I think it's good to return to Birmingham, obviously, where the Super Six was for so many years. And uh, I think teams are excited about You know, they're always excited to go to Auburn, Alabama, because that's where the big boys play. But I think there's excitement this year, too, because – a new state brand new stadium you know uab's only played a couple of games there so i sure. think uh there's great excitement about uh making it to the state championship game and playing in that new stadium uh column you wrote this week about central phoenix city and uh coach patrick nix and everything that they have going on there i mean that's a program obviously a very historic program has been around a long time uh and been very successful for a long time uh talk a little bit about what you found out just in talking to patrick nix and the folks around central phoenix city yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've known Patrick as long as I've known any athlete or coach in the state. I mean, when I uh, just started my uh, coach, my, my reporting life in Gadsden, Alabama, Patrick Nixon was playing quarterback at Etowah High School, um, along with Freddie Kitchens was his wide receiver and those guys. And so I've covered – I've known Patrick for a long time. And I called him this week to talk about his son, Bo Nix, um, you know, undergoing surgery, the Auburn quarterback, and just – I talk about his faith because I just thought it was outstanding how he relied on his faith uh, in that situation through his broken ankle, and that's kind of been a, a, a trend for the Knicks family. I mean, it, since I've known Patrick, he's always stood on his faith, and now that he has children, they're standing on that faith as well. So I was very proud to write that column. It's on AL.com if you want to check that out as the, as the final scores come in tonight. But also I talked to him a little bit about you know Central Phoenix City uh, going into the night was 12-0, and 0. Um, and seemingly it kind of played under the radar, I thought. I mean, a lot of the publicity in 7A has been about Thompson, really mostly about Thompson, and Hoover beat Thompson, and, and they got into the conversation. But, you know, Central Phoenix City and Auburn are down there playing good football as well, um, and a lot of good players. I mean, we're going to hear a lot about uh, Camar uh, Camar Carmelo English and Tamari and Parker next year. They are uh, two junior studs for Central Phoenix City that might be two of the best recruits in the state. And, of course, Patrick's other son, Caleb Nix, is the quarterback, and he's had a sensational year. So 
Uh, I just thought it was a good time to catch up with Patrick and just, you know, really proud as a Christian myself of the way he and his family have uh, handled everything, really, but particularly the tough times. Yeah, it's been uh, there's been something to watch there, that transition at Central Phoenix City uh, through the Knicks regime over the last few years. Uh, listen, this is our final scoreboard show of the year, so the next time I see you, Ben, will be at the uh, Super 7. So, listen, keep writing those great columns. We'll keep reading them at AL.com, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Hey, appreciate you guys having me all year. Hope hope we're around to do it again next year. <laughs> no question. We will be. We hope we will be anyway. Ben <laughs> Thomas joining us. He writes about high school sports for AL.com all year here on our Inside the AHSAA segment. Ben, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Ben. And, you know, he makes a point um, that Central Phoenix City and and, and Auburn, to some degree, uh, discounted during the course of the year. And maybe it does have something to do with geography. Maybe the fact that Central Phoenix City is so far east and it's over there on the Georgia line and sort of away from the different media centers uh, of Montgomery and Birmingham and uh, what we sort of expect there. Let's take 5A and 4A right now and let's get to scores on the fours. It is brought to you by Wickedly Delicious. Wickles, Pickles, Andy, why don't you hit 5A for us? I'll do it. Andalusia took down a UMS Wright tonight, 20 to 14. Uh, a bit of a surprise. Not an easy task to uh, take down UMS Wright. They are an, uh, a stalwart here uh, in the Alabama High School playoffs. Uh, let's see, it was Pike Road over Faith Academy. No, 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 no trouble there. 42. Nothing. Wow. Uh, Pike Road. And they're a pretty good football team. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Uh, it Pleasant Grove uh, took down Center Point 49 to 21. And it was Fairview over Parker. Fairview 44. Parker 27. So you got Andalusia and Pike Road on uh, the north side and Pleasant Grove and Fairview down there in the south. On the uh, north side of the 4A bracket, you had Madison Academy, number one team in 4A as the season finished. Had a challenge tonight from Good Hope. Madison Academy was up 21 in the first quarter. Good Hope ties it at 21. That game was back and forth for a while. Madison Academy gets the win 35 to 28. It was Aniana defeating Brooks 56 to 28. On the south side, Viger defeats American Christian 26 to 10 and Jackson over Hanley. 24-23 in a great game there. That scores on the fours. We'll be right back. You want the best opportunity to be successful in life. You deserve that opportunity. Well, you just happens to be in our motto. Central to you. Central to your success. Your future is right now. Don't wait. Make your dreams a reality by enrolling at Central Alabama Community College. Register today at CACC.edu. Finding a job might be tough, but starting your new career has never been easier. Wellborn Cabinet in Ashland has a wide array of career opportunities with benefits. General labor production, skilled cabinet builders, product assembly line, shipping, over-the-road truck drivers, clerical, marketing, security, daycare, office clerks, and so much more. Apply in person, 38669 Highway 77 South in Ashland, or online at wellborn.com. Building cabinets, building careers, and building our community. Floyd's Feed and Seed in downtown Dayville, Alabama is ready. Well, body plants are in, fruit trees are in, pine straw and feed hay. They've got a ton of that just for you. Of course, it's stored right out front for your convenience. Pottery, really some neat stuff. Feed, seed, fertilizer, and a whole lot more is what you're going to get from Floyd's Feed and Seed. You know, they've been there for three decades plus. Go see them today and tell them OKD sent you. The Alex City Parks and Rec Department serves the residents of Alexander City with quality facilities and programs designed to positively affect the lives of the citizens. From youth sports programs to adult activities and our senior center, the Alex City Parks and Rec offers services for all ages. The Cooper Rec Center, Lake Winds Golf Course, and the Senior Activity Center are just some of the great features the Alex City Parks and Rec Department provides for the people of Alex City. For more information on any of our programs, call 256-329-6736. 
The water level may be down, but that doesn't mean it's not a great time to consider selling your lake home, acreage, or condo, as it's worth more money now than ever before, as there are far more buyers than there are homes available. Ask yourself, how much money am I leaving on the table, and why am I trying to do this alone when I can call Century 21 Lake Area Realty and get more for my property than what it's worth and let them do all the work? Hi, I'm Rhonda Gaskin, Century 21 Lake Area Realty. We're ready to jump in and do the work for you. Call 256-825-4800. It's football time, fall is in the air, and you have places to go and things to do. During Ram Power Days, your first stop is Tallahassee CDJR for your choice of the best new vehicles. See the all-new Jeep Cherokee L. It's here now at Tallahassee CDJR. Score big at your next tailgate with new 2021 Ram 1500s, now with 0% financing up to 72 months. Shop our wide selection of performance vehicles built for whatever you've got planned. Get in the game at Tallahassee CDJR. Drive a little, save a lot. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show, and it's time to start our visits around the state of Alabama. We'll start out with the Central Phoenix City Red Devils and Mr. Jason Sasser, play-by-play voice of the Red Devils tonight. And, Jason, um, look, first of all, nice win, 28-17 over Auburn. Uh, at one time, though, this game was 17-7. to Like Central uh, almost got off to a slow start or Auburn got off to a fast start. Which was it? Um, it was Auburn. Um, they they played us better in the first half of this game than any team has played us in any quarter of football all season long. You know, we've only trailed twice all year, and we trailed the entire first half. Uh, Auburn, I, I tip my hat to Coach uh, Etheridge and his team. They had a brilliant uh, plan when they came into this game, and uh, uh, they, they played out of their minds. Like Caleb Nix uh, had a big night and uh, using his legs, has that been uh, – is that a big part of the offense? Has that been the case all year? You know, um, it, it's been – it has been a possibility all year. But as the year has gone, um, gone longer, Caleb has started running more and more. Um, he was – his numbers are crazy for tonight. He threw for 141. He ran for 140. And, and y'all, I don't know if you've had a chance to see Caleb play. Uh, I've, I've seen a few quarterbacks around the state, and, and Caleb Nix is, is special. I'm just going to put it that way. He is very special. He's a, obviously a, a great player. There's a lot of talent on this Central team. We talk about it a lot, and it may be a lot of junior and sophomore talent, but the talent's still there for this team to go in uh, 10 days or so and 10, 12 days and compete with Thompson for the 7A title? I, I think we're, we're, we're relatively young at a lot of key positions, and we've got some good players. We've got a young man tonight, uh, uh, T.J. Parker, Tamorian Parker on our defensive line. He absolutely owned the fourth quarter. He took it over, sacked the quarterback for Auburn twice, and uh, just put the defense on his back. Uh, Coach uh, Hatmaker, our defensive coordinator, uh, he, the, the defense has been great all year long. T.J. actually, uh, he, he owned that fourth quarter tonight. You guys got uh, a little bit extra time to get ready for the championship game. Uh, anybody uh, get banged up? Anybody in need of that extra time? It, it's, tonight we had a couple of guys go down. It, it, from best I've heard so far it, is that it was mostly cramping towards the end of the game. I don't think anything serious. Now, last week, uh, we had a real scary moment in our game. We lost a senior linebacker, James Smyree. Uh, it, it looked like a worst-case scenario, but James was uh, taken to the hospital. He was released. Um, he, he's done playing football for us. He's got to heal his injuries. But uh, he was, you know, at school this week. He was on the sideline tonight. But uh, other than us missing James, um, I think we're going to be okay coming out tonight. Pretty healthy. Jason, let's let's do uh, – I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of uh, what a coach might call self-scouting on this one, right? Well, in, in your opinion, what is, what is the one thing that Central Phoenix City has to do, button up, clean up, whatever, to get ready to face Thompson in the 7A game and give themselves a chance at a win next Wednesday? Um, we've, we've got to be more disciplined. Um, we, we, we got too many penalties tonight. Um, and, and, and some, some 
I don't know, uh, just losing our losing our uh, composure a little bit. Uh, we had a late hit or two uh, going out of bounds, and we we've got to play with more discipline. We can't have we can't give them yardage. They're uh, Thompson's an incredible team. I don't have to tell you guys that, and uh, they don't need any help. So we we've got to clean that up a little bit. Well, it's going to be fun to watch. We can't wait to see that 7A title game. Uh, I think the whole state of Alabama is looking forward to this one. Jason, thank you so much for your time tonight and all year, my friend. I appreciate any chance I get to talk about our Red Devils. Thank you, guys. You got it. Jason Sasser, play-by-play voice of the Central Phoenix City Red Devils, joining us tonight on the Cross Country Mortgage Hotline. What mortgage or refi options are right for you? Visit crosscountrymortgage.com to find out. And all of our guests coming to us there. Hey, We'll, we'll talk about the north side of that bracket coming up here in just a couple of minutes, too. But first, we got to get to Scores on the Fours. It is brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Andy Graham has your 3A bracket. Montgomery Academy over T.R. Miller, 28 to nothing. So no problem there for Montgomery Academy. Uh, also, Montgomery Catholic, no problem with Hillcrest. 41 to 6, although, you know, giving up six points, they, they may be disappointed. That's a, that's a bit more than their standards, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to have Montgomery Academy and Montgomery Catholic. A couple of Montgomery, Montgomery schools on the south side. How about right? that. Uh, you, it was, uh, brace yourself. The Fife is no, the Fife is not going to the championship. Fife will not be a four time champion. They fall to Sacks 14 to 7. It was obviously a very hard fought game, but uh, fall. One touchdown shy, Sacks wins 14 to seven. On the other side, it was Piedmont over Winfield. Oh, Piedmont, they, they just continue to always seem to hang around this time of year. 43 to 14. So you got Sacks and Piedmont on the other side of the bracket. That should make for a fantastic final four. In the 2A bracket, you had Cleveland defeating Southeastern 39 to eight. Mars Hill over Spring Garden 42 to 19. So that sets up your north side semifinal, Cleveland and Mars Hill. On the south side, it was Clark County over Comer, 14 to seven. And Lynette goes down to Highland home tonight, 15 to 14. Wow. Um, and what must have been an incredible game there. So Cleveland will face Mars Hill Bible. Clark County will face Highland home. Those are your 2A brackets. And that is scores on the fours. Brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Let's get the other half of that 7A championship game in next. We'll talk to Thompson Warriors coming up on the AHSAA Radio Network. Are you looking to buy a home, but you're having second thoughts because you think it'll be a complicated process? Cross Country Mortgage, your local lender, will make everything smooth, easy, and stress-free for you. When you work with CCM, there are only six simple steps in the home buying process. Pre-approval, application, underwriting, conditional approval, final underwriting, and closing. That's all there is to it. Get started today with their online pre-approval application. Visit crosscountrymortgage.com slash auburn dash al dash 4307. Encore Sports Medicine. Life is a sequence of little successes. The story of my Southern Union success began the day I walked on campus. Making new friends, mastering a new skill, reaching a personal goal, the Encore performance, the first date, the internship, and now, soon, the dream job. That's the story of my Southern Union success. Register for classes and get ready to watch your Southern Union story come to life. 
Hello, my name is Dave Milton with Southeastern Land Group. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We sell farmland and timberland in Alabama and the surrounding states. Not only do we have a land sales division, but we also have a timber sales division where we can help you with your timber sales and your timber appraisal. There's 22 of us in our group scattered throughout the southeastern United States. We are a full service land and timber sales company. We do with farmland, timberland, cattle property, poultry farms. 866-751-LAND. Go to the website, selandgroup.com. I wish the people got less excited about celebrities and more excited about people like teachers and fire. You know, folks who make a difference every day. Well, I bet you had a favorite teacher or a family member who was helped by a first responder. Life Insurance offers these everyday heroes a little something extra, like discounts to help those who help others. If you're a teacher, preacher, first responder, active military, a state or federal employee, see what Alpha can do for you. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Jay and Andy with you as we talk about the playoffs tonight. And, of course, we're talking about the finalists in 7A. We just visited with Jason Sasser, play-by-play voice of the Central Phoenix City Red Devils. Now let's talk to Seth Hagen on the broadcast crew for the Thompson Warriors tonight as they get a 35-10, to 10, uh, let's call it a get-back win, if you will, against the Hoover Buccaneers tonight on the road. Um Seth, we were talking about it before. It seemed like Thompson uh, would maybe played a little angry tonight, like they wanted to prove something about that first game with this game tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these guys came out focused and absolutely just determined to let everybody know that a month ago that that was ancient history and they were – like I said, determined to prove that, you know, in that first half against Hoover, that is who they truly were. And tonight they made a statement. It, it, it even blew me backwards, guys. Obviously, the quarterback coming back, that makes a, a huge difference offensively in the game. But what was, a different, what was the difference defensively? I mean, Thompson just completely shutting down the Bucks tonight. Oh, yeah. I mean, I said it in the pregame. I looked for the defense to really set the tone, and that's exactly what they did. I mean, you know, that uh, Hoover drove down for a field goal. They missed it. Uh, we went up 14-0, and then, I mean, it, it was just – it was crazy. I mean, the, the defensive line, linebackers were always in the back. They were hampering uh, Bennett Meredith, and that's what I said before the game. I said if they can at least keep him in the pocket contained – he loves to roll out. He loves to throw on the run. He's one of the best to do it. Can't wait to see him at Northwestern. But uh, our front seven, there is no match for them. Let me ask you, Seth, about the, the Thompson offense. When Connor Harrell is hitting, and we know we know the kind of talent they have kind of around the field, but when, when Connor Harrell is, is, is hitting his targets, when he's playing his game, uh, this offense is um, a, a really – scarily efficient and it's it's not just big play after big play it's efficiency every play you know that does what it's designed to do if it's designed to be an eight yard out then it's an eight yard out it seems like a very efficient offense oh yeah he is easily the most efficient quarterback in the state and he's such a cool calm customer there in the pocket he doesn't get rattled he took a couple of sacks tonight but he also took it right to the hoover Defense ran for over 50 yards in the first half, so he was not scared, and you're right. I mean, he is so proficient with the football. Tonight, 11 of 12, 142 yards, four touchdowns, three of those to Ryan Devins, and two of them were just absolute money balls. I mean, this kid is a football machine. He's an athlete, and Mac Brown and North Carolina are getting, in my opinion, a a blue chip athlete. This kid is not a three star. He is a prime time player. Thompson now going to take on Central Phoenix City. Uh, I'm sure you uh, have thought about this, and I'm not, sure, not gone into a lot of detail, but you know who the the Red Devils are. What kind of matchup do you think this will be? Well, I think this is going to be another great matchup between you know great offense in central phoenix and our defense obviously our offense is great too and i believe they're the best in the state but caleb nix presents a a great challenge if if bennett uh meredith was the best quarterback that we had faced uh caleb nix would certainly be right there with him 
Uh, they can score with anybody. Uh, tonight uh, didn't score as much, which I anticipated, but, I mean, th- this is going to be one heck of a game. It's going to be our third time in the last four years facing Central in the championship. Different coach, of course, but, I mean, the, the rivalry between these two schools is growing, and I love it because, I mean, this is what high school football is all about. You, you build new rivalries. And we've now beaten Hoover six out of the last seven times. It sounds crazy when you say it, but, I mean, I, I am so looking forward to December 1st in Protective Stadium. Man, that, it just, uh, it's amazing. Seth, uh, real quick, I want to I wanna ask you the same question I asked Jason Sasser. A little bit of self-scouting. What is the one thing that Thompson needs to avoid uh, to go ahead and win this 7A state championship game? What is the one thing they got to watch out for? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I, I got to say uh, they cannot or they need to keep the pocket clean for Connor Harrell. I mean, this, this was a great game tonight. But Hoover was able to put pressure. Several teams have been able to put pressure. And we also what happened last year in the state championship. Auburn came in with an amazing game plan and really shocked us. So our offensive line, they played well tonight, but they need to take their uh, their level to an even higher because uh, Central Phoenix is not going to back down. And I know these guys are ready because they a lot of them were freshmen when we got it handed to us in the state championship you know, three, four years ago. So I would say got to keep it clean. And uh, certainly you can't give Caleb Nix any more opportunities than he's going to already have. He's a great player, and Patrick Nix is going to come in with an excellent game plan. Seth Hagen joining us on the Cross Country Mortgage Hotline. Seth, thank you for the time. All right, guys. Great right. season. Thank you. All right. Andy, let's do scores on the fours. Brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles, and we got to move fast. Give me that 1A bracket. Brantley takes down Keith 20 to 14. It was Wadley over Woodland 27 to nothing. So you got Brantley and Sweetwater in one, and Wadley and Pickens County in the other because Sweetwater defeated Maplesville 41 to 7, and Decatur Heritage fell to Pickens County 60 to 46 in a shootout. All right. Uh, There were three state champions crowned today in the Alabama Independent School Association. This morning in the 1A game, Lowndes defeated Jackson 21-6. This afternoon in the 2A game, it was a Tonga 52 and a Scambia 35. And then this evening in the 3A game, uh, Pike Liberal Arts defeats Tuscaloosa 41-21. So three champions crowned in the AISA. We'll continue bouncing around the state. We'll talk about Lynette. Coming up next, they went down tonight on the AHSAA Radio Network. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's time to command the season and time to treat yourself at KiaOfAuburn.com. The whole family will get an upgrade with the all-new Carnival MPV. Or check out the new 2022 Kia Sportage, the newest member of the Kia SUVs. Looking for style and performance? Get them in the K5 or Stinger. Selection, price, trade-in value. You always get it all at Kia of Auburn. Command the season and shop for a vehicle or book a service from home at KiaOfAuburn.com. Kia of Auburn, where you're always number one. Skag, the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice, the best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Satterfield Outdoor Living on Highway 280 in Alex City. Hi, I'm Scott Blake. I'm Angie Richardson, and we are the loan team here at Movement Mortgage. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or you've gone through the process before, our mission is to help you move forward with the purchase of your future plans. Call me at 256-397-2771. Or call me at 256-794-1003. Scott Blake, NMLS number 527945. Angie Richardson, NMLS number 216556. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity, NMLS number 39179. For licensing information, please visit NMLS Consumer Access. 
When visiting Mission Thrift in Auburn, you'll always find a wide selection of items at great prices. Mission Thrift carries your favorite name brand clothing like Patagonia, Free People, Lily Pulitzer, and so many more, along with antique pieces and a variety of household items. Every week, Mission Thrift introduces fresh items to the floor, truly giving you a treasure hunt experience. If you're looking for a truly unique thrift experience, head to Auburn and visit Lifesavers Mission Thrift, located on East University behind Zaxby in Auburn. All donations are tax deductible and benefit a charity. Hillaby Towers is an affordable senior citizens community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East. Spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, comfortable living where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more information on Alexander City's best kept secret. 256-329-0552 that's Hillaby Towers in Alexander City. Patterson Air Inc. has been serving the Lake Martin area for 36 years. Patterson Air Inc. is available every day, including this weekend, so you don't have to suffer in the Alabama heat. Patterson Air Inc. is proud to be an American Standard dealer. American Standard heating and air conditioning systems are energy efficient, reliable, and built to last, and they have every size in stock. Call Patterson Air Inc. now, your most trusted heating and air company on Lake Martin, 334-850-3500. Schedule your appointment now, Patterson Air Inc., certification number 8 Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Jay and Andy with you. Final show of the year tonight as we are talking about the quarterfinals right now of the 2A bracket. And we'll go back to the Cross Country Mortgage Hotline, talk to our friend Marvin Turner, WRLA. Uh, where Lynette tonight, the Panthers, Marvin, went into this game, I would think, you know, if, if we had lines and such on such games, would be a, a pretty decent favorite over a good Highland home team. But Highland home yeah, gets no, to win 15-14. No we would probably been at least a 10 or 14 point favorite. But, you know, when you travel, you go to a hostile environment, and if you don't play well, and you let them stay in the game because we blew about three or four opportunities to score, uh, you, you're going to get beat. And uh, like I said, we just did not play consistently good football. We would look good for one series and then terrible for two series. But uh, we had some athletes on, on Lynette's team that really we had a couple long passes that were just off the fingertips. Um uh, our quarterback, Atkinson, last week, he looked brilliant. This week, he just – the timing just didn't seem to be there for some reason. What kind of offense does Highland home run? A, a low-scoring game here between uh, Lynette it, and Highland. It was low-scoring, and uh, there was um, – they ran – they didn't throw the ball. Their quarterback was efficient when he threw the ball. He had a couple of nice completions. Uh, he ran the ball extremely well. And uh, he was the only really running threat they had. The running backs were almost non-existent. But it was kind of it started as a defensive struggle, and it kind of stayed that way. Um, we tied it up. They were up seven to nothing, and we scored. And then they blocked our extra point. Then we went ahead and went for two. And we were up fourteen to seven. Then they came back in the fourth quarter and scored. And we had a face mask penalty on the uh, – and they put it on the extra point. So they went for two from the one-yard line and got it in, made it 15-14. Then we had a pick six call back for pass interference. And that was pretty much it. They ran the clock out. We had one more try. We held them. And uh, with about 15 seconds to go in the game, and we had – a first down pass and would have gotten us in the field goal range, but our receiver dropped it. Wow. So, yeah, clearly a first down. It would have put us at, you know, maybe the 30. And uh, Bonilla probably could have hit that field goal. You know, Marvin, obviously you guys see a lot of the teams in, um, uh, in 2A, especially in 2A South. I, I was looking at this Highland home team. Five weeks ago, this team was two and five, two and two in region play. 
Um, they they had, uh, had just come off an overtime loss to Isabella. They had lost 41 nothing to Luverne. And then something clicked with this Highland home team, and that's win, win, well, win. you got to give it – got to give credit to their coach, Coach Pouncey. He kept that team together. Yeah. So they lost to Brantley. They lost to Maplesville, which are two really fine 1A programs. They lost to uh, 4A school, Montgomery Christian, or I think Montgomery Christian. But you're right. They were 2-5. and five. They rolled off five straight wins, but – you know, the thing is, when you get in the playoffs, everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero. And um, we we were 2-0, and oh, and they were 2-0. and oh. Yeah, it caught, it caught my attention last week when I saw that they had beaten Elba 32 to nothing because I know that Elba has a really good team this year. Uh, so this Highland home team has just come together at the right time. Hey, Marvin, listen, thank you so much for the time this year covering the Lynette Panthers, and uh, we appreciate you coming on and being a part of the show. Okay, my pleasure, and good luck to you guys. And you got a great show, and look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you, man. Yeah, this uh, this Highland home team just I mean, you talk about a team that that gets rolling at the right time. And uh, how yeah, many teams win are two and five can say, you know, we're going to be one game away we're one from game a state away, title, one game away I, from a state title? That, yeah. that almost never happens. Yeah, it's so, they ought to ride this. You better ride it and cash it in. That's right. I it mean, congratulations like to Highland well. Home because yeah. that's uh. Uh, quite an accomplishment to get that going here. Let's get back into some scores for you. Scores on the fours. If you missed them earlier, once again, Andy, take us through that 7A bracket. All right, here we go. We got uh, Central Phoenix City over the Auburn Baby Tigers, 28-17. to 17. And the Thompson Warriors in a rematch with Hoover, no problem this time. They avenged that loss early in the season, win 35-10. to 10. So you got... Central Phoenix City and Thompson taking a little time off, and then they will uh, they kick off the uh, championship week now, right? That's right. December 1st, yeah. Wednesday night. That's going to be a fun one. Yep. Uh, let's take a look at 6A now, where Mountain Brook defeats the 6A defending champion Pinson Valley 30 to nothing. They'll move on to face, face Clay Chogville, who defeated Gardendale in overtime, 50 to 44. Uh, so great game there. And the Mountain Brook Clay Chogville just sets up to be a wonderful game to watch, too. Hillcrest defeats Sarah Land 24 to 16. They will move on and face Hueytown, who beat up on Opelika tonight, 46 to 10. We talked about that game some last week as being one of the premier games that you would want to see this week would be Hueytown Opelika. Hueytown and that explosive offense against Opelika and that stout defense, but offense carries the day tonight for Hueytown. I think a lot of people thought Sarah Land might be in the championship game as well. That's right. Uh, so big time win from. Hillcrest. Hillcrest and Hueytown on the south side. That is your 6A bracket, and that scores on the fours. It's brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles, nearly 100 years in the making from our grandma's kitchen to yours. When we come back, Kamari Darrington from Central Alabama Scoreboard. He's going to join us. We're going to talk about the best defense in the state, regardless of classification, and that resides at Montgomery Catholic. We'll do that next on the AHSAA Radio Network. The Alabama Slammer. Let's party. It's a popular drink at parties, but drink too many and you'll wind up in this Alabama Slammer. And if you drink and drive, get ready for a real Alabama Slammer. If you're involved in a crash where a driver's been drinking, you're four times more likely to die. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Hey, it's Brett Pritchard, and I'm here to tell you all about Sims Foods, who you know better as Wickles Pickles. Wickles Pickles, that 90-year-old recipe, wickedly delicious, relish, okra, and pickles. From Saturday sandwiches, tailgate snacks, to holiday dinners with your family and friends. From their family to yours, Wickles Pickles, those wickedly delicious pickles. Wickles Pickles, wickedly delicious pickles. Growing your business isn't just one thing, it's a million little things. Should you lease, rent, or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local cat dealer is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. Visit ThompsonCat.com, your compact equipment provider. No, no, no! 
let's go over this again. Who starts off with a real Coke taste? Coca-Cola! And then Coca-Cola pitches the real Coke taste to who? Coca-Cola! How is Coca-Cola gonna give real Coke taste to itself? Take a lap, genius! Coca-Cola takes a snap and then pitches the real Coke taste to Coke Zero running up on the right. You got it? Yeah! At that point, we fake punt the real Coke taste. Who fakes the punt? Coke Zero! Take a lap, Coke Zero! Real Coke taste! Zero calories! Main Street Family Care is now offering COVID-19 vaccinations to eligible patients at all clinics seven days a week. At this time, COVID-19 vaccines are available to healthcare workers who meet certain criteria. Vaccine criteria and an interest form for those who are currently ineligible for the vaccine can be found at www.mainstreetfamilycare.com slash COVID-19 vaccine. Alabama Power first generated hydro energy in 1914 at Lay Dam harnessing the power of water to bring electricity to our state. Today, more than a century later, Lay Dam is one of 14 Alabama Power Hydro plants that provides Alabamians clean, reliable, affordable energy with zero emissions. And it's one more way we're helping elevate Alabama. Welcome back to the HSA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Jay and Andy with you. And with our next guest, Kamari Darrington of Central Alabama Scoreboard. You'll find his work at centralalabamascoreboard.com. And he joins us on the Cross Country Mortgage Hotline. And uh, Kamari, you had you had Montgomery Catholic and Hillcrest Evergreen tonight. Catholic Montgomery gets the win 41-6. to They say defense travels. I don't know if you're traveling, staying home, going to space, or digging a hole. The Catholic Montgomery defense is unbelievable. I want to read you some numbers before we welcome you in here. Yeah. This uh, this team has had eight shutouts on the year. No one has scored more than seven points. And they average giving up 2.54 points per game. Uh, that's that's incredible. Yeah, it really is. How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, you know, just, another, uh, just another day at the office for the Catholic defense. They did give up a touchdown, which – at the end of the first half, which was uh, where the Hillcrest uh, really used tempo there at the end of the first half, was trying to score before time ran out. But other than that, uh, three interceptions by the defense. P.J. Dudley with his fourth interception return touchdown of the year, this time from 35 yards out. And then the offense, after a slow start, finally got going. Caleb McCreary threw for 132 yards and two touchdowns. Jeremiah Cobb ran for 152 yards. And two touchdowns, he had 27 carries. They really tried to run the ball early on against Hillcrest defense, and it really kind of wore them down as the game went along. And then uh, just the the speed of the defense for Catholic, really they could uh, Catholic uh, held Hillcrest under 180 yards total offense. It was a, another dominant performance by Catholic, and you know they get MA again, get Montgomery Academy again, and uh, that'll be the hottest ticket in town next week here in Montgomery. Uh, you see a lot of high school football in this state, uh, you know, just up and up and down a classification or two. Uh, have you seen a team more dominant this year or in past years than this Montgomery Catholic team? Uh, not from this area. I mean, uh, you know, obviously Pike Road this year has played extremely well, but I think uh, I think top to bottom, you know, you look at uh, uh, Pike Road schedule compared to MA, uh, compared to Catholic. Uh, Pike Rose actually, you know, giving up a few points. Catholic, I mean, you just can't get anything against this team. Um, they they shut down the pass. They shut down the run very well. And uh, we got guys scoring every time they touch the ball on the defensive side of the ball. Um, it's just hard to score against them. And, um, you know, even even with Hillcrest doing that, they really had to fight those four. Uh, they, had, they had to use three downs to score down inside the five-yard line. So, I mean, Catholic really makes it difficult for you to do the things that you do well, and uh, it's just it just shows every week that they're not complacent. You know, that's the real key to it. They haven't been complacent at any game this year. Uh, Kamari, we had uh, Coach Kirk Johnson and Montgomery Catholic uh, interviewed on the show here. I guess it was four or five weeks ago now, and I, I got a phone call after the show was over uh, from someone in, a, in an entirely other market. Um, 
who was listening to the show and they said, who was that coach that was interviewed? I said, well, that's Kirk Johnson. He's the first year guy at Montgomery Catholic. He said, man, he is impressive. Um, talk about the job that Kirk Johnson's done. Obviously, Aubrey Blackwell built that program over a number of years. Kirk Johnson was there as a defensive coordinator. He takes over as head coach, and he has really uh, tightened the screws even more on this team, uh, and they are, they are as sharp as it gets. Yeah, I mean, this is a seamless transition when you've got a guy that's been there in the program for so many years, and he just comes over, and, you know, he kind of kind of keeps everything in line. And you know, really, it came down to, you know, him having to talk with a quarterback, Caleb McCrary, early on in the season, saying, we're going to be running the ball a little bit more because we got Jeremiah Cobb. And I think that was kind of the thing that helped him buy in was that Kirk kind of understand what kind of offense that he had because he was obviously, uh, obviously he's a defensive guy at first. But, you know, when you have guys like T.J. Dudley, when you got guys like the Augusta Swims up front, Patrick Ryan, now, the defense is really solid, so they had to be the leaders early on. But now the offense, and the offense has always been good, but it really came down to how quick these guys were able to buy into what Kirk Johnson was telling them. And he has a really he has a laser-like focus. Every week, they're just focused on doing what uh, they need to do to be successful, not necessarily what they can stop the other team from doing. As long as they are doing what they do to be successful – and, you know, as long as they're not complacent and they're playing at their level, there's not, there hasn't been too many teams that have even been close to them, at least not this year. Kamari Darrington joins us from Central Alabama Scoreboard and centralalabamascoreboard.com. Kamari, thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Uh, let's get right back into Scores on the Fours, brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Andy, 5A. Andalusia takes down UMS Wright 20 to 14. It was... Pleasant Grove over Center Point, 41, I mean 49 to 21. Pleasant Grove over Center Point, 49 to 21. Uh, it was in the other side, Fair, Fairview over Parker, 44 to 27. And the aforementioned Pike Road over Faith Academy, 42 to nothing. So in the top half, you got Andalusia and Pike Road, which should be very entertaining. And also Pleasant Grove and Fairview. So uh, there is your 5A bracket. In the 4A bracket on the north side, it was Madison Academy over Good Hope tonight, 35-28, a back-and-forth game in the second half there. But uh, Madison Academy gets the win. They'll face Aniana in the semifinals, who defeated Brooks 56-28. On the south side, it was Jackson getting a one-point win over Hanley. Hanley spent much of this year at number one in 4A uh, before their first loss of the season. They go down tonight, 24-23, Jackson will now face Viger, who defeated American Christian 26 to 10. Scores on the fours is brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. When we come back, it's our spotlight interview, and it's AHSAA Executive Director Alvin Briggs joining us to wrap this season up with us here on the AHSAA Radio Network. Do you normally think of blueprints when you hear Auburn Repro Graphics? Well, you are partially right. They do handle your wide and small format printing and scanning for builders. But Auburn Repro Graphics also offers full color indoor and outdoor signs, banners, graphics, and installations for storefronts, interior walls, vehicles, and boats, as well as a full line of supplies for architects, engineers, students, and artisans. So now you know, Auburn Repro Graphics isn't just a blueprint shop. It's your one-stop shop for all of your designing, printing, and supply needs. Visit Auburn Repro Graphics today at 660 North Theme Road in Auburn or Auburn Repro. Pro.com. You want the best opportunity to be successful in life. You deserve that opportunity. Well, you just happens to be in our motto, central to you, central to your success. Your future is right now. Don't wait. Make your dreams a reality by enrolling at Central Alabama Community College. Register today at CACC.edu. Lionville Health and Rehab in Lionville, Alabama has a staff and has had a staff of caring folks for years. If it has come that time in life for that person in your family to look at the possibility of going into a health and rehab facility, you have a choice. You have a choice to choose and the fine folks at Lionville Health and Rehab would like to take this time to invite you by to meet them and them you. 
caring folks that care for you and your family. You have a choice. The number to call is 256-396-2104. Finding a job might be tough, but starting your new career has never been easier. Wellborn Cabinet in Ashland has a wide array of career opportunities with benefits. General labor production, skilled cabinet builders, product assembly line, shipping, over-the-road truck drivers, clerical, marketing, security, daycare, office clerks, and so much more. Apply in person, 38669 Highway 77 South in Ashland, or online at wellborn.com. Building cabinets, building careers, and building our community. The all-new Triple R Cafe in Rockford is open and the place for true Southern-style cooking. Open Tuesday through Saturday in downtown Rockford on US 231. The Triple R Cafe serves up true Southern cooking with a meat and three for lunch. And on Friday and Saturday, get the best dinners in the area with fresh from the garden vegetables. Guff-style scallops and shrimp and bayou-style alligator. Central Alabama's new place for Southern-style cooking with a down-home atmosphere. That's the all-new Triple R Cafe in downtown Rockford. Serving East Central Alabama since 2005, we are Coosa Valley Respiratory and Home Medical of Sylacauga. Coosa Valley Respiratory has medical equipment and supplies, including oxygen to home ventilation services. We carry a full line of bracing, power chairs, scooters, and more. And when you trust Coosa Valley Respiratory, you are dealing with local people that care about your well-being. Providing quality home care for our community, Coosa Valley Respiratory and Home Medical, 201 West Fort Williams, Sylacauga. Give us a call at 256-245-1411. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. It is time now for our Spotlight interview. It's brought to you by Southeastern Land Group. Whether you're buying or selling rural land in the Southeast, selandgroup.com is the place to get started. And uh, we're proud to have joining us tonight for the second time this year, Executive Director of the Alabama High School Athletic Association, Mr. Alvin Briggs. And Mr. Briggs, it's uh, first of all, how are you doing? And uh, happy Friday to you. Well, happy Friday to you. I'm doing great. Uh, can't believe we're at this point of uh, the playoff season. Looked like we just started on August the 19th and 20th. We're kicking everything off, and uh, this, you know, it's uh, we thought we was ready for football weather. Now we're we're at the end of the season, and uh, we're having some great weather, and uh, we have some teams that are ready to wrap up the season. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those weeks. We're in the quarterfinals for six of our classifications and semifinals, of course, in seven A. But it's one of those weekends. If you're a, if you're one of these communities, one of these schools, or just a high school football fan, it's a great weekend to catch some high quality football. Oh, it's awesome! Uh, we have some new teams in. We have a couple of teams that are still trying to to extend their their, their winning streak. A couple of teams trying to get back to Super Seven because it was there before. Uh, it's all exciting. The community is exciting. The students are exciting. And uh, as you stated, we're we're quarterfinals and semifinals with seven A, and uh, you know things are getting a little tougher and uh, games are getting a little tighter and, and uh, every every inch counts. So. Here we go. We're ready to see what's happening. You know, we just closed out two of our other championships. We finished with volleyball uh, culminating in, in, in all those multiple games there in Birmingham at the Crossplex and just finished uh, on two weekends ago our cross-country championships. So, you know, our fall championships are rolling right along. And uh, while we're finishing up Super 7 on, on the weekend of uh, first, second, and third of December. We also be finishing up our swimming state championships uh, the third and fourth of that weekend. So uh, it uh, you know it all be finishing right up here together right before Christmas. Yeah, and there certainly is a lot happening right now. And talk a little bit about flag football because we're going to see some of that in Birmingham too. Yes, uh, through through Coach Severis's efforts before he uh, before he retired uh, a couple actually a couple years. Uh, we were set to meet with the Atlanta Falcons and the National Federation uh, uh, right when the pandemic hit two years ago, but we kept those calls going and kept the, the Zoom calls going, and uh, through some other efforts, we were able to pilot flag football for the first time, uh, female flag football for the first time here in Alabama, and we had a tournament-style uh, 
based uh, brackets going on, and we have uh, two schools that will be playing at 3 o'clock on Wednesday, December 1st, for that that tournament uh, 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 championship finality between here at Trustville and Smith Station High School. It should be some exciting, exciting time to watch that day. And uh, I, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about this, but I think uh, I'm excited as a broadcaster. I know a lot of the uh, uh, the press is excited, fans are excited, schools are excited. The Super Seven returning to Birmingham this year at the new stadium. Yes, we 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 um, of course Coach Savarese uh, retired. Another one, he he was uh, uh, Birmingham came and wanted to be a part of Super Seven, so we put them in a rotation of having Super Seven and. We're going to be in Protective Stadium uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's going to be exciting. They've done a beautiful job there in Birmingham with 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 the facilities there, and they're excited to have us. And it's just going to be outstanding. Um, it, it will be another great venue for our student athletes to perform and be a part of. When you have the band, the cheerleaders, and and all, everybody's involved and. Uh, we what we you know, hope to be a great atmosphere and a great event for those students to to come to Birmingham and and to enjoy uh, the finale of the football uh, season. Lots more to talk about, and we'll join Executive Director Briggs later in the show for part two of this spotlight interview. Thank you very much to uh, Director Briggs for joining us, and he'll join us again later. We'll have the second part of that interview from earlier today. Back in the scores on the fours, brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Andy, 3A. We got Montgomery Academy over T.R. Miller, 28 to nothing. On the other side, it was Sachs taking down former champion Fife from last year. Three-time defending champion. Three-time defending champion, 14 to 7. Uh, in the bottom half, we've got Montgomery Catholic steamrolling along over Hillcrest, 41 to six, and Piedmont over Winfield, 43 to 14. So you got Montgomery Academy and Montgomery Catholic in a battle of Montgomery, and Sachs and Piedmont in the other side of the bracket. All right, in the 2A bracket, it was Clark County over BB Comer, 14 to seven on the south side. In the other south game, it was Highland Home. Defeating Lynette tonight in a surprise. Highland Home, we talked about this, 2-5 and five earlier in the season. They're now on a six-game winning streak and headed to the semifinals. On the other uh, side, the north side of the bracket, Cleveland over Southeastern, 39-8. And Mars Hill Bible takes down Spring Garden, 42-19. to 19. So your semifinals in 2A, you have Cleveland and Mars Hill Bible, Clark County, and Highland Home. Those are your scores on the fours. Brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles, nearly 100 years in the making from our grandma's kitchen to yours. When we come back, we'll be joined by the best in the business, and I'm going to let him defend a position he took earlier in the year and see if he wants to do it. i got a feeling he will. Okay. Nobody better at it at the recruiting game than John Garcia, Jr., Director of Recruiting for SI.com. He joins us next on the AHSAA Radio Network. The water level may be down, but that doesn't mean it's not a great time to consider selling your lake home, acreage, or condo, as it's worth more money now than ever before, as there are far more buyers than there are homes available. Ask yourself, how much money am I leaving on the table, and why am I trying to do this alone, when I can call Century 21 Lake Area Realty and get more for my property than what it's worth and let them do all the work. Hi, I'm Rhonda Gaskin, Century 21 Lake Area Realty. We're ready to jump in and do the work for you. Call 256-825-4800. They all new Triple R Cafe in Rockford is open and the place for true Southern style cooking. Open Tuesday through Saturday in downtown Rockford on US 231. The Triple R Cafe serves up true Southern cooking with a meat and three for lunch. And on Friday and Saturday, get the best dinners in the area with fresh from the garden vegetables. Guff style scallops and shrimp and bayou style alligator. Central Alabama's new place for Southern style cooking with a down home atmosphere. That's the all new Triple R Cafe in downtown Rockford. 
When visiting Mission Thrift in Auburn, you'll always find a wide selection of items at great prices. Mission Thrift carries your favorite name brand clothing like Patagonia, Free People, Lily Pulitzer, and so many more, along with antique pieces and a variety of household items. Every week, Mission Thrift introduces fresh items to the floor, truly giving you a treasure hunt experience. If you're looking for a truly unique thrift experience, head to Auburn and visit Lifesavers Mission Thrift, located on East University behind Zaxby in Auburn. All donations are tax deductible and benefit a charity. Patterson Air Inc. has been serving the Lake Martin area for 36 years. Patterson Air Inc. is available every day, including this weekend, so you don't have to suffer in the Alabama heat. Patterson Air Inc. is proud to be an American Standard dealer. American Standard heating and air conditioning systems are energy efficient, reliable, and built to last, and they have every size in stock. Call Patterson Air Inc. now, your most trusted heating and air company on Lake Martin, 334-850-3500. Schedule your appointment now. Patterson Air Inc., certification number 8 Floyd's Feed and Sea covers both sides of the road in downtown Dable. Incredible selection of plants, stones, insecticides, and gift selection in the additional part. Our original store has tack and boots for men, women, and children, gloves, hats, belts, and Carhartt clothing. Come on in and visit. Open Monday through Saturday for your convenience with a whole lot of service. Floyd's Feed and Sea, downtown Dable, Alabama. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's time to command the season and time to treat yourself at KiaOfAuburn.com. The whole family will get an upgrade with the all-new Carnival MPV. Or check out the new 2022 Kia Sportage, the newest member of the Kia SUVs. Looking for style and performance? Get them in the K5 or Stinger. Selection, price, trade-in value. You always get it all at Kia of Auburn. Command the season and shop for a vehicle or book a service from home at KiaOfAuburn.com. Kia of Auburn, where you're always number one. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Jay and Andy with you as we have crossed into the 11 o'clock hour now, and we're proud to welcome back to the show the final time this year uh, for our good friend John Garcia, Jr., Director of Recruiting, SI.com. Uh, as we say, the best in the business. Nobody studies this stuff and knows more about it than John Garcia, Jr., and I can tell you that uh, with confidence. Now, that being said, John, I want to ask you about something that you said earlier in the year, and then I'm going to give you some numbers that kind of back up your statement, right? So right. earlier in the year, uh, somewhere around midseason, uh, on one of these shows, we were talking about Montgomery Catholic. And you made the comment there that there may not be a more talented team in the Montgomery area than Montgomery Catholic. And I have more than one person that commented to me after that interview, hey, has he seen Pike Road play? Is he familiar with Pike Road? Does he know anything about Pike Road? But I want to give you some numbers, John, that kind of back up your argument. Montgomery Catholic this year in 13 games, has eight shutouts. No one has scored more than seven points. They have given up a total of 33 points in 13 games. That's 2.54 points per game. Unbelievable. Uh, there's a strong argument to be made that Montgomery Catholic is more dominant, whether you, whether you want to call it talented or not, more dominant than any team in the state. And they've scored over 600. Well, well maybe we could fuse the Montgomery Catholic defense with the Pike Road offense. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a super team. But look, you know, you've got three Power Five uh, seniors at the back end of that Montgomery Catholic defense with T.J. Dudley and the pair of safeties committed to Mississippi State, and then the offense has the young running back Rogers and a bunch of other guys. So it's look, it's it's a heck of an argument, and I think you know there's no way to really settle it between the two. I don't think, but uh, it's it's a great argument either way. Pike Road's offense is just unreal with Iverson Hooks and uh, Quinshawn Junkins and those guys. So it's quite the argument, but uh, it's just good to see good ball in, in the city of Montgomery, of course. Thompson and Hoover, the other big night, uh, big game tonight, uh, a rematch from earlier in the season when Hoover surprised uh, a lot of people and took down Thompson. Not, not, a, not, a, uh, not a redo of that. Uh, is Thompson in control from beginning to end? Uh, you a little bit surprised at that score? A little bit, but, you know, it's, it's about the quarterback sometimes. You know, in the regular season game, Connor Harrell, the North Carolina commit, went down with an injury, didn't play in the second half, and, and tonight uh, Bennett Meredith, the Northwestern commit, went down and didn't come back in the second half. So I think that played a big role. Uh, but, look, when Thompson's offense is at full strength, 
it rivals that Pike Road offense we were talking about as, as maybe the most explosive in the state. Certainly the most consistent passing game in the state of Alabama resides at Thompson High School. And, and we all know what that defense brings uh, individually on its own. So uh, I think revenge was a big part of it tonight for them. And I actually know that. I saw all over social media that that was, was kind of the statement because Hoover had the biggest win of the season. But it didn't count uh, like it does in the playoffs. So obviously Thompson rebounded, and that 7A title game is uh, going to be a pretty good one. But I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to pick against Thompson. Yeah, no question. All right, so let's talk a little bit about these Super 7 games that are coming up. And uh, I know you're coming uh, up for the Super 7 there in Birmingham. So coaches, obviously, there's so much that goes into evaluating talent, so much that goes into the recruiting. In these championship games, is there anything left to learn about these prospects by watching how they compete in those type of games? I think so. I think win or loss, you can you can find out a lot about a prospect in a game of – of a, a Super 7 magnitude. I remember last year watching uh, Tanner Bailey, the Oregon quarterback commitment, play in a losing effort and actually coming out with a higher opinion of him because he kind of got beat up, showed a lot of toughness, a lot of grit, a lot of unselfishness for his team in, in kind of taking that beating um, for, uh, for Gordo against Hanley last year. So I think we could still take away smaller, intangible things from these games, and some others just rise to the occasion and save their best for last, like we used to see out of the you know UMS ride and the Maplesville kids when those schools were off those runs. So I think there's still a lot to take from it on that stage. So I'm excited to get back to Birmingham, no doubt. John, tell everybody where to read your stuff. Absolutely, si.com slash college or siallamerican.com, free college football and basketball coverage. John Garcia, Jr., Director of Recruiting at SI.com. Thank you so much for your contributions all season, man. Always a pleasure, fellas. Y'all take care. All right. And we will see you in Birmingham. Let's get to scores on the fours now. It's presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Andy, the 1A scoreboard. Here we go. It is Brantley over Keith, 20 to 14. It was Wadley over Woodland, 27 to nothing. It was Pickens County over to Carrier Heritage, 60 to 46 in a shootout, and Sweetwater demolished Maple, Maplesville, 41 to seven. So in the top half, you got Brantley and Sweetwater going to match up, and in the bottom half, Wadley and Pickens County. All right, in the AISA, the Alabama Independent School Association today, games were played at Crampton Bowl in Montgomery, and three state champions were crowned today. In the 1A classification, it was Lowndes over Jackson, 21 to six. We were talking about defense at one point uh, in the first uh, in, in the first half. Jackson had run 19 plays for negative 19 yards, uh, so quite a defensive performance there. Going the wrong way. In the 2A game, Otago defeated Escambia, 52 to 35, to take the 2A state championship. And in 3A, it was Pike Liberal Arts, 41 to 21, over Tuscaloosa. So congratulations to those state champions in the AISA. Scores on the fours brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. We are going to come back here on the AHSAA radio network and we'll go up to Huntsville, talk to Steve Bolton about Madison Academy. Big challenge tonight from Good Hope. That's next on the AHSAA radio network. Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. Alabama Power first generated hydro energy in 1914 at Lay Dam, harnessing the power of water to bring electricity to our state. Today, more than a century later, Lay Dam is one of 14 Alabama Power Hydro plants that provides Alabamians clean, reliable, affordable energy with zero emissions. And it's one more way we're helping elevate Alabama. Life is a sequence of little successes. The story of my Southern Union success began the day I walked on campus, making new friends, mastering a new skill, reaching a personal goal, the encore performance, the first date, the internship, 
And now, soon, the dream job. That's the story of my Southern Union success. Register for classes and get ready to watch your Southern Union story come to life. Hello, my name is Dave Milton with Southeastern Land Group. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We sell farmland and timberland in Alabama and the surrounding states. Not only do we have a land sales division, but we also have a timber sales division where we can help you with your timber sales and your timber appraisal. There's 22 of us in our group scattered throughout the southeastern United States. We are a full service land and timber sales company. We do with farmland, timberland, cattle property, poultry farms. 866-751-LAND. Go to the website, selandgroup.com. Are you looking to buy a home, but you're having second thoughts because you think it'll be a complicated process? Cross Country Mortgage, your local lender, will make everything smooth, easy, and stress-free for you. When you work with CCM, there are only six simple steps in the home buying process. Pre-approval, application, underwriting, conditional approval, final underwriting, and closing. That's all there is to it. Get started today with their online pre-approval application. Visit CrossCountryMortgage.com slash Auburn dash AL dash 4307. The taste of the South starts out here. However you roll into work, you can bring the flavor with Jack's Breakfast Catering. Huge scratch-made buttermilk biscuits and hearty breakfast sandwiches, mixed or matched, starting at just $15. Don't forget to add delicious fresh ground Royal Cup coffee and classic breakfast sides. Because great work starts with great breakfast. Breakfast Catering, starting at $15 from Jack's. All about the South. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Jay and Andy with you. As we go back to the Cross Country Mortgage Hotline, what mortgage or refi options are right for you, visit crosscountrymortgage.com to find out. And we'll talk to Steve Moulton, WCCN in Huntsville, where Madison Academy tonight gets a hard-fought 35-28 win over Good Hope. And, um, Steve, you've called a lot of football in that area, and you had told me a couple of weeks ago that you thought Good Hope uh, could be a, could be a stumbling block in the north side of these 4A playoffs. And, man, after going up 21 nothing, Madison Academy gets a challenge from a, a really a determined Good Hope team tonight who ties it up a couple of times late before Madison Academy gets a 35-28 win. Yeah, well, what, what a hard-fought game. I, I mean, both teams played so well tonight. Uh, M- Madison Academy made the most of their opportunities early, and uh, tonight – I will tell you that Will Stokes eclipsed 3,000 yards in total offense tonight and has uh, 46 touchdowns on the season. It has been an amazing season for Will Stokes. Uh, Receiving, running, uh, punt returning, kick returning. He really is a difference maker for Madison Academy. But good hope when they were down by three scores on their home field, uh, I – you knew there was going to be a comeback in them, but what an answer that they had in the second quarter, uh, scoring two touchdowns in the second quarter, making it a one-score game. They won the coin toss, so they actually came out of the second half and just more or less controlled the tempo, and that's what tied it at 21. And on the ensuing kickoff, the, uh, Good Hope uh, attempted – four onside kicks tonight, and uh, two of them worked. But uh, the one that they did not do, uh, Madison Academy was expecting an onside kick and instead kicked it deep and pinned us on our nine-yard line. And this was a tie game, and just more or less, as I mentioned, Will Stokes was kind of the bell cow that ended up culminating in a touchdown on a 91-yard drive. It just... It was uh, an excellently played football game on both ends, and now uh, the Mustangs get ready for a home game next week in the semifinals. You know, yeah, I think everybody, every fan would tell you they'd love to have a runaway game, but you know, <laughs> for, your, for your team, you, you got to appreciate the fact that you can uh, have a tight game like this. You can, uh, you know, absorb a, a comeback like that and still prevail. That's got to get, send you into the next game with a lot of confidence. It does, and the defense has played so well through the first uh, two rounds, and this was such a hard test because of the the ability that Good Hope had 
um, at the tailback position and at the quarterback position. Those were both seniors, and it, it, the, the quarterback reminded me a lot of Johnny Manziel, where he would just kind of just follow the pocket and just make something out of nothing. And I, I hate that that young man's a senior, and I hope he's playing at the next level somewhere because he's a really talented player in Mallon. It, it just uh, – Benny Mallon's his name. It just – he was fun to watch, but just all, all in all, just a thoroughly enjoyable football game to watch that was played at a high level on both ends. All right, so Aniana is the next opponent now for the Mustangs. What, uh, what do you know about Aniana, if anything? Well, I, I was actually going to ask you guys. I have yet to look <laughs> at the huddle film on them, but I, well, I think we were I, at least talking with some other people that are on the broadcast crew with me. We were all kind of thinking Brooks. Would that be a nice tie-in with Bob Godsey, who started his coaching career at Brooks, but they went down tonight. So I honestly don't know too much about the Redskins right now. I know that they beat – good hope in the last game of the regular season so it does make me think that well we're we're going to see a high quality opponent at bill washington stadium next friday night that's yeah, been a, it's been fun to watch madison academy all year um just continue to win and uh, continue this march so steve best of luck to you next week and uh if you get that good luck maybe we'll see you in a couple of weeks in birmingham uh, fingers crossed hope to see you in birmingham Thank you, my friend. Steve Moulton, WZZN, 97.7 The Zone in Huntsville. Uh, great affiliate for a long time here on the AHSAA Radio Network. Let's get right back into scores on the fours. And you know they're so good, you can't just do them once. Yep. You can't just do them twice. you got to tell the story three times if you want it to stick. 7A, one more time, Andy. How good is Aniana? They went on the road and beat an undefeated Brooks. Yes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, in 7A, you got Central Phoenix City defeating Auburn 28-17. to A big comeback from uh, the Red Devils as Auburn took a big lead in that game early, but uh, Central Phoenix City prevails. Thompson, no trouble with Hoover in the rematch, 35-10. to The Warriors over the Bucks. So, Central Phoenix City and Thompson – We'll kick things off in the Super 7. And I'm just going to say this, and, and John Garcia said it right. I don't think anybody's going to pick against Thompson in this game because of how talented and how good and how experienced they are. But I've been saying for a couple of weeks now, just keep your eye on that Phoenix City team because they're they're really good and maybe a little undervalued. So Nobody thought Auburn had a chance last year, right? No, that's right, and Auburn did have a, had a good chance there at the end of that yeah. game. In the 6A bracket on the north side, it was Mountain Brook. Shutting out last year's champion Pinson Valley 30 to nothing. Clay Chogville gets an overtime win over Gardendale. Great game there, 50 to 44. So Mountain Brook and Clay Chogville in a big time matchup next week in the semifinals. On the south side, it was Hillcrest over Sarah Land, 24 to 16. And Hueytown hangs 46 points on a very good Opelika defense to win 46 to 10. So Hillcrest and Hueytown in the south side of the 6A bracket. Scores on the fours is brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Nearly 100 years in the making from our grandma's kitchen to yours. When we come back, we got another game to talk about. We're going to bring in our friend from the cutoff news, Seth Holloway. He's going to talk about Pleasant Grove. They continue to roll, too. It's another team I've been high on all year. We'll talk about it next on the AHSAA Radio Network. It's football time, fall is in the air, and you have places to go and things to do. During Ram Power Days, your first stop is Tallahassee CDJR for your choice of the best new vehicles. See the all-new Jeep Cherokee L. It's here now at Tallahassee CDJR. Score big at your next tailgate with new 2021 Ram 1500s, now with 0% financing up to 72 months. Shop our wide selection of performance vehicles built for whatever you've got planned. Get in the game at Tallahassee CDJR. Drive a little, save a lot. Hillaby Towers is an affordable senior citizens community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East. Spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, comfortable living where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more information on Alexander City's best kept secret, 256-329-0552. 
That's Hillaby Towers in Alexander City. Do you normally think of blueprints when you hear Auburn Reprographics? Well, you are partially right. They do handle your wide and small format printing and scanning for builders. But Auburn Reprographics also offers full color indoor and outdoor signs, banners, graphics, and installations for storefronts, interior walls, vehicles, and boats, as well as a full line of supplies for architects, engineers, students, and artisans. So now you know, Auburn Reprographics isn't just a blueprint shop. It's your one-stop shop for all of your designing, printing, and supply needs. Visit Auburn Reprographics today at 660 North Theme Road in Auburn or Auburn Re- Pro.com. Serving East Central Alabama since 2005, we are Coosa Valley Respiratory and Home Medical of Sylacauga. Coosa Valley Respiratory has medical equipment and supplies, including oxygen to home ventilation services. We carry a full line of bracing, power chairs, scooters, and more. And when you trust Coosa Valley Respiratory, you are dealing with local people that care about your well-being. Providing quality home care for our community, Coosa Valley Respiratory and Home Medical, 201 West Fort William, Sylacauga. Give us a call at 256-245-1411. Life is a sequence of little successes. The story of my Southern Union success began the day I walked on campus, making new friends, mastering a new skill, reaching a personal goal, the encore performance, the first date, the internship, and now, soon, the dream job. That's the story of my Southern Union success. Register for classes and get ready to watch your Southern Union story come to life. The Alex City Parks and Rec Department serves the residents of Alexander City with quality facilities and programs designed to positively affect the lives of the citizens. From youth sports programs to adult activities and our senior center, the Alex City Parks and Rec offers services for all ages. The Cooper Rec Center, Lake Winds Golf Course, and the Senior Activity Center are just some of the great features the Alex City Parks and Rec Department provides for the people of Alex City. For more information on any of our programs, call 256-329-6736. back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Jay and Andy with you as we go back now to the Cross Country Mortgage Hotline and talk to Seth Holloway with the cutoff news. He's following Pleasant Grove tonight as they take down Center Point 49 to 21. They will move on to the semifinals of 5A where they will face Fairview. Seth, how you doing? I'm doing all right, man. It was a little bit cold out there tonight. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like it's a little chilly out there tonight. Look, this Pleasant Grove team is one I've told you since I think midseason. I've been really high on this team, and they continue to be impressive week after week. They really just they score points. They they I said earlier they wake up in the morning and they they put fourteen on the board. You know. Oh, I know. And um, what's interesting about Pleasant Grove is they can score at will. They're not a. I mean, they can drive the ball like they proved tonight. I mean, they just they just get the the, the ball and. The next play, they're in the end zone. I mean, it's not even, it's not even, uh, it's not even a, a, a long drive. It's just they're they're. I don't think I've seen a team them in Hueytown, but I don't think I've seen a team like Pleasant Grove in the 11 years I've been doing this. I don't think I've seen a team that can just strike at will. I mean, it's just they just like you said, they just wake up and they score. I mean, it's just. <laughs> I mean, Alex Young had three touchdown passing touchdowns tonight, one rushing touchdown for them. Lacey had two rushing touchdowns. Markel Jordan had one rushing touchdown. Um, and then uh, Young's two, three pass, uh, passing touchdowns were two of them were to Cam Harris and one was to Parker. Uh, and uh, it was just, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this Pleasant Grove, but the word ama- is amazing. I mean, at the end of the first quarter, it was 15 to 14, and then Pleasant Grove just took off like wildfire, 28 to 14 at the half, and then at the end of the third quarter, it was 43 to 21. And by about halfway through the fourth quarter, and I've never seen this in a quarterfinal championship game before, but about halfway through the fourth quarter, Pleasant Grove put in their second string, and I was just like, "Good night." <laughs> Has it been like this all year? Had they been building to this point? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, you- yes, yes. This Kid Lacey Young. Um, I actually have their season stats through the um, through last week's game. Um, Alex Young, their quarterback, broke 2,000 yards tonight for the season. Um, 
as of last Saturday, as of last Friday night, he had 27 uh, touchdown passes. Uh, their running back has, as of last week, I don't have this week's stats yet, but as of last week, their running back, Demarcus Lacey, had five, uh, 1,500 yards rushing and 21 touchdowns. So it, this, this team is just there. There's something to behold, um, and and I, I, I'm I'm not seeing a team like this ever. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this before. I mean, it's I can't describe it. <laughs> yeah, they've they've been. Uh... Just so much fun to watch. Seth, tell everybody where to read your stuff online. Um, it's thecutoffnews.com. All right. And, uh, Seth, listen, we thank you so much for your contributions throughout the year. Hope we get to see you in a couple of weeks in Birmingham. Sure. And if you know, y'all want to return next week, we'll be at the Pleasant Grove game, and I'll, I'll have somebody at the Huey Town Hillcrest game, and I'll be at the Pleasant Grove game next week myself. So, um we look forward to both of those. Uh, the West Jefferson area has really kind of uh, come on this year. We've got we've got two explosive teams out of this out of this region, out of this central, out of this West Jefferson County region, Hewitt Town and uh, and Pleasant Grove. So it's going to be interesting going down the down the final stretch. Yeah, no question. Seth Holloway joining us from the Cutoff News uh, as we uh, talk about Pleasant Grove. And again, I mean, it's just they've they've had one game this year where they scored less than 30, and that was in a really tough matchup with Fairfield uh, earlier in the year, 27-25. They got the win there. What's Other, their loss? What's, uh, th- their Grove's loss got was, one loss. Well, their, their one loss, actually, they won 61-24 to against okay, Oxford, yeah. and it I wound thought. up getting uh, vacated right. uh, later on in the year. But, uh, no, as far as that goes, they really do not have a loss on the field, so to speak. Yeah. All right, let's get back into scores on the fours now. It's presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles, and we will take you back now to the 5A bracket. Speaking of Pleasant Grove, they are on the north side of 5A. Let's see what's going on there, Andy. And we just talked about it. They beat center point 49 to 21, and from what I understand, they have an explosive offense. Andalusia yes. defeats UMS right 20 to 14. It was Pike Road over Faith Academy. 42 to nothing. It was Fairview over Parker, 44 to 27. Andalusia will take on Pike Road in the north and Pleasant Grove and Fairview in the south. I know everybody, you know, look, you do, it just seems like you talk about two explosively well, offensive Well, Pleasant Grove, teams. Fairview in the north. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. That's right. Pike it's, Road it's, it's upside down on my sheet. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there you go. All right, so let's take a look at 4A now where Madison Academy, 35-28, they get the win over Good Hope. They'll move on to face Aniana, who defeated Brooks, 56-28. That'll be a great matchup coming up next week. In the uh, south side, it was Jackson over Hanley, 24-23, and Viger over American Christian, 26-10. I think a lot of people will be a little surprised at that Viger score, too, when it's all said and done. So you'll get Madison Academy and Aniana next week and Viger and Jackson in the 4A semifinals. That scores on the fours brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. We'll come back and have part two of our interview with Executive Director Alvin Briggs of the Alabama High School Athletic Association. That's next on the AHSAA Radio Network. Main Street Family Care is now offering COVID-19 vaccinations to eligible patients at all clinics seven days a week. At this time, COVID-19 vaccines are available to healthcare workers who meet certain criteria. Vaccine criteria and an interest form for those who are currently ineligible for the vaccine can be found at www.mainstreetfamilycare.com slash COVID-19 vaccine. Hello, my name is Dave Milton with Southeastern Land Group. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our company. We sell farmland and timberland in Alabama and the surrounding states. Not only do we have a land sales division, but we also have a timber sales division where we can help you with your timber sales and your timber appraisal. There's 22 of us in our group scattered throughout the southeastern United States. We are a full service land and timber sales company. We do with farmland, timberland, cattle property, poultry farms. 866-751-LAND. Go to the website, selandgroup.com. Hey, it's Brett Pritchard, and I'm here to tell you all about Sims Foods, who you know better as Wickles Pickles. Wickles Pickles, that 90-year-old recipe, wickedly delicious, relish, okra, and pickles. 
from Saturday sandwiches, tailgate snacks, to holiday dinners with your family and friends. From their family to yours, Wickles Pickles, those wickedly delicious pickles. Wickles Pickles, wickedly delicious pickles. Life is a sequence of little successes. The story of my Southern Union success began the day I walked on campus, making new friends, mastering a new skill, reaching a personal goal, the encore performance, the first date, the internship, and now, soon, the dream job. That's the story of my Southern Union success. Register for classes and get ready to watch your Southern Union story come to life. Hi, John. You have messages. Not now, phone. I'm driving. You know you want to text your friends. Texting and driving is illegal. No distractions, period. People die that way. Eating, putting on makeup. Scroll through your music? Nope. Your girlfriend just texted. She's bored. Sorry, not worth dying for. Good call. She seems a little clingy. Don't text your life goodbye. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. The AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show and Alabama High School Athletic Association Executive Director Alvin Briggs joining us now for part two of tonight's Spotlight interview. Let's revisit the, the first of this year. And, you know, we've, and I, I think it's a credit to, to you and all the administrators at the AHSAA and the schools around the state. But back at the beginning of the year, we didn't know what we were looking at just in terms of uh, forfeitures and so forth. And we've had a few, but. Uh, they've been few and far between. I think everybody deserves a lot of credit for having managed that situation here in year two of this pandemic so well. You know, when uh, you know when we uh, asked the board and talked to the board about trying to get back to some sense of normalcy, not having the the forfeitures like we had before, and we knew that we could we could do it because we've done it once. Our schools and our communities uh, last fall did a great job with COVID and maneuvering through uncharted waters. I mean, to do the things we do so our students have a chance to participate. You know, along those same lines, JJ, um, we, you know, we usually average around uh, 150,000, uh, 150, uh, two or 3,000 students that participate in, in athletics uh, you know, on an average year. You know, last year we finished the year 7 through 12 at 190,000 students that competed. Wow. I mean, that is, it, it, you, that is awesome numbers to know that uh, we had that many students to, to, that wanted to get out and compete in athletics. You know, being the only state in the, in, in, uh, in, in the nation that started all our games on time, had all our championships on time, and finished on time uh, is, is a testament to our schools and uh a testament to our governor, a testament to Dr. Harris and Dr. Mackey, our st uh, state uh, director of uh, superintendent of education, uh, for doing those things that, to allow us to get back and do those do the things we are. Um, and then we fast forward this year, not knowing what what was going to happen. You know, we had less in the first five games. We had less than 20 schools to have at least one COVID. Uh, 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 game that they were missed, and that's the first five games. In the first week alone, we had over 130 schools that did a COVID. You know, so you know the drastic difference. And then uh, you know we only had one school in volleyball to do COVID, but they rescheduled and played that match. You know, so it was just awesome what our schools did and how they were able to, to do the things and make sure that the student athletes were able to have a chance to compete. Now, and I, I, that's kudos to our schools, kudos to our parents, and definitely kudos to the entire community. Let's talk, uh, just to kind of wrap things up here, I think, uh, you know, what an exciting time for all of these young people who now are competing and 
getting closer to that dream of making it to a Super 7. Uh, certainly the kids and the coaches deserve uh, all of our respect and a, and a whole lot of congratulations for making it this far. Yes, they do. I, there's no doubt. You know, it, it, without their efforts and without them doing everything that the Dr. Harris, the state health director, their local school system, uh, their parents, uh, the, 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 the school community as a whole, without them doing everything they can to help mitigate, to, to help uh, keep this virus under control, to, to do the things they need to do so they're doing this thing and for moving forward and, and doing all the things possible so they can enjoy and have a successful season. Well, it's been a it's been a lot of fun. I'd like to congratulate you personally on uh, managing through a great season this year. It's been a lot of fun. Can't wait to see the ending in Birmingham up there. And thank you again for everything that you do. Oh, well, JJ, thank you for what you do for high school athletics. How you promote high school athletics um, without people like you promoting high school athletics and giving a voice to to our schools and our school communities and supporting them. Uh, you know, uh, it, we wouldn't be where we are. So thank you, J.J., and thank you for your station and what y'all do for high school athletics. Executive Director of the Alabama High School Athletic Association, Alvin Briggs, joining us here on the Spotlight interview tonight. Thank you for the time. Let's go uh, watch some football. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you again to uh, Executive Director Briggs, a super nice guy, uh, former Auburn player. Of course, Auburn, I, I want to say Greenville High School, maybe. Trying to remember. Now. I'm trying to remember uh, where he played his high school ball. But anyway, a great player, and I'm sure Auburn fans of a certain age remember <laughs> Alvin Briggs. You may be a little young for that, Andrew. I may be. Uh, so anyway, uh, but again, back to, to something he said. Uh, this show does promote high school football and high school athletics around the state, but uh, we do that because of the 16 or 18 radio stations, the three television stations, the multiple online outlets. Uh, that all give us a place to talk about them here. And without them, uh, we would just be talking to an empty room. So thank you to you guys. Let's get back into scores on the fours. Presented by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. 3A Brackets, Andy. Montgomery Academy defeats T.R. Miller 28 to nothing. It was Montgomery Catholic over Hillcrest 41 to 6. On the other side, it was Sacks over 5. Three-time defending champion 5. Sacks over five, 14 to seven. It was Piedmont over Winfield, 43 to 14. So you got Montgomery Academy and Montgomery Catholic on one side of the bracket and Sacks and Piedmont on the other. Winners go to Birmingham. And I was uh, correct, by the way, Greenville High School. There you go. Alvin Briggs. So there you you're go. A, you're a man of many talents. <laughs> Memory is usually not one of them, but I got that one right. On the 2A bracket, on the south side, it was Clark County defeating B.B. Comer 14-7. They'll move on now. They'll face Highland home. Maybe the surprise of the night, knocking no off doubt. the Lynette Panthers, uh, who would have been a heavy favorite in that game. At one point in the season, Highland home was 2-5. and five. They've now won six in a row and are headed to the semifinals. Congratulations to them. On the north side, it was Cleveland over Southeastern 39-8 and Mars Hill Bible over Spring Garden 42 42- to 19. So Mars Hill Bible in Cleveland will play in the semifinals next week. Clark County and Highland home on the south side of the 2A bracket. That's it for scores on the fours brought to you by wickedly delicious Wickles Pickles. We'll come back. Andy and I will give you brave, courageous, probably not well thought out predictions on the games of tomorrow. That's next on the AHSAA radio network. Lineville Health and Rehab in Lineville, Alabama has a staff and has had a staff of caring folks for years. If it has come that time in life for that person in your family to look at the possibility of going into a health and rehab facility, you have a choice. You have a choice to choose and to find folks at Lineville Health and Rehab would like to take this time to invite you by to meet them and them you. Caring folks that care for you and your family. You have a choice. The number to call is 256-396-2104. You want the best opportunity to be successful in life. You deserve that opportunity. Well, you just happens to be in our motto. Central to you. Central to your success. Your future is right now. 
Don't wait. Make your dreams a reality by enrolling at Central Alabama Community College. Register today at CACC.edu. Hillaby Towers is an affordable senior citizens community located in Alexander City on Highway 22 East. Spacious one bedrooms are available now. Great location, peaceful setting, comfortable living where pets are allowed and utilities are included. Call today to find out more information on Alexander City's best kept secret, 256-329-0552. That's Hillaby Towers in Alexander City. Skag, the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice, the best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Satterfield Outdoor Living on Highway 280 in Alex City. Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply Stores have the tools and materials to get the job done right, whether you're a professional contractor or just a weekend do-it-yourselfer. With everyday customer conveniences like a drive through lumber yard, price match promise, and our best rewards program, each of our nine locations offer top brands and building materials like lumber, hardware, tools, paint, lawn and garden, and much more. Visit today and see what Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply can help you build tomorrow. Hi, I'm Scott Blake. I'm Angie Richardson, and we are the loan team here at Movement Mortgage. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or you've gone through the process before, our mission is to help you move forward with the purchase of your future plans. Call me at 256-397-2771. Or call me at 256-794-1003. Scott Blake, NMLS number 527945. Angie Richardson, NMLS number 216556. Movement Mortgage supports equal housing opportunity, NMLS number 39179. For licensing information, please visit NMLS Consumer Access. Welcome back to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show, final show for the 2021 season, our 10th uh, here on the network of doing this show. It's been a a uh, fun season, Andy. Let's talk about tomorrow because we got college ball tomorrow. How about that? Um, we'll start with the evening game. Auburn at South Carolina. I actually think this is a very important game for Auburn um, because I think this is – this game could be the difference between seven and five, six and six, and that that is a very big, I think, mental difference, if that makes sense. Um you know, regardless of where it takes you or doesn't take you bowl game wise, I think it's an important game for Auburn. It probably is. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, first year coach, I'm not sure six and six and seven and five, that's a big a deal for him. But it, psyche wise, it does look better on the on yeah. the sheet of paper for sure. I, you know, I Auburn's better than South Carolina. There's no question about that. They're more talented than South Carolina. South Carolina's done. You know, they're they're five and five. I don't think anybody who saw them being better in Florida, who saw them ha- being ahead of Florida in the statistics. So you got a backup quarterback. You got a backup. Who knows if Auburn can kick a field goal? You got a backup. Right. You got a backup field goal kicker. So, I, I think T.J. Finley will play well. I think there's some opportunity there from Auburn to finally run the ball a little bit more consistency. If Tank Williams, I mean, if Tank Bigsby has a really good game, then I think Auburn wins going away. If Auburn struggles running the ball, it's going to be a fourth quarter game, and I, I eh, it's going to get hairy. I don't think. And, and while I think Bo Nix is the better option at quarterback, I don't think there's leagues of difference mm. between the two uh, in terms of Auburn's ability to perform offensively. So I think Auburn can go there and just be more physical than South Carolina, just more bodies, right? I think I think Auburn can just be more physical and kind of grind out one of those 27 to 20 kind of games. You know what I mean? South Carolina's hungry. That's the only. I wonder how hungry Auburn is coming off two losses and coming off that collapse they had last week. Don't feed them tomorrow because they need to be. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, Alabama and Arkansas is the two thirty game tomorrow. That game in Tuscaloosa. Um, Arkansas is the kind of team that maybe could give Alabama trouble. I said uh, a couple of weeks ago, A and M had no chance to beat <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> yeah. I believe the last time we were on, I said Tennessee had no chance 
to beat Alabama. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, uh, look, if you're praying for chaos, you want Arkansas to win this game. Right. Because I'm, I'm pulling for the six-way tie yeah. in the West. I just think that would be great. <laughs> it wouldn't be good for the SEC, but it would be – I just think that would be phenomenal. But um, I, if, it was at, if it was in Arkansas – and I will say – Worse Arkansas teams have given Alabama trouble. Yeah. That whole, what was it, was 14-13 game or something, I mean, yeah. several years ago. So, I mean, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility, but Alabama's so much better offensively. They'll score, and uh, I don't think Arkansas could put it up in the points. Arkansas has the kind of offense that could give Alabama trouble. They have a physical running game. They have a lot of misdirection in there, which seems to cause trouble. Uh, for Alabama's defense this year. Uh, obviously, I think K.J. Jefferson's just a, a really good player. Um, so, they, they have the kind of offense. I'm not sure their defense can give Alabama enough trouble. That's the problem. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think Alabama probably comes away with, you know, I think the spread's 19. It'll be somewhere in there, 14 to 21 points, something like that. Um, but, you know, hey, stranger, stranger things have happened. This is true. Uh, not many, but some. Not certainly. many, but, yeah. you know, occasionally it does happen to be interesting. I mean, who's Alabama got at running back behind Brian Robinson? I mean, you know. I don't know. Is the know. Sunshine Scooter Nick Saban from the 1960s going to uh, suit up and, you know. I, that Yeah, I'd like to see that. <laughs> at least he the, can still jog out. He's not after the hip replacement? Yeah. yeah. Uh, He's not getting rolled up on and broken, breaking his leg. You know when that <laughs> happens, you, you know when you, when you start getting rolled up on his coach, you might it may be time to set it aside. Yeah, well maybe, but not as long as you're winning though. Well, yeah, uh, keep that coming. Yeah. Uh, thank you to all of our guests tonight. Thank you to all of our sponsors all year long: Wickles Pickles, Cross Country Mortgage, uh, Alabama Department of Transportation, our friends at Southeastern Land Group, of course, all of our uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful sponsors. Uh, Main Street Family Care, uh, Russell Dewitt Center, uh, to name a few. So, thank you for allowing us to do this for 10 years. Let's do one more scores on the fours this year. Andy, you've got the 1A bracket right there. I do. We have Brantley over Keith, 20 to 14. We had Sweetwater over Maplesville, 41 to 7. Uh, Sweetwater making a statement tonight as well. We had Pickens County over Decatur Heritage, Pickens. 60 to 46, Pickens County, the runner up in the uh, 1A championship game last year, fell to Linden. Twadley over at Woodland, 27 to 0. So you got Brantley and Sweetwater on one side of the bracket, and Wadley and Pickens County on the other. All right. Uh, earlier today, games were played at Crampton Bowl in Montgomery in the Alabama Independent School Association state championship games. In the single A classification, it was Lowndes Academy over Jackson Academy, 21 to six. They are now 1A state champions in the AISA. Otago Academy defeated Escambia Academy, 52 to 35 in this afternoon's 2A game. Then in the 3A nightcap, it was Pike Liberal Arts over Tuscaloosa, 41 to 21. So your three state champions in the AISA this year, Lowndes Academy, Otago Academy, and Pike Liberal Arts. That's it for Scores on the Fours, brought to you by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles from all of us here at the AHSA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Thank you for tuning in all year. We'll talk to you from the Super 7 in a couple of weeks. Have a great weekend. Hey, it's Brett Pritchard, and I'm here to tell you all about Sims Foods, who you know better as Wickles Pickles. Wickles Pickles, that 90-year-old recipe, wickedly delicious, relish, okra, and pickles. From Saturday sandwiches, tailgate snacks, to holiday dinners with your family and friends. From their family to yours, Wickles Pickles, those wickedly delicious pickles. Wickles Pickles, wickedly delicious pickles. Main Street Family Care is now offering COVID-19 vaccinations to eligible patients at all clinics seven days a week. At this time, COVID-19 vaccines are available to healthcare workers who meet certain criteria. Vaccine criteria and an interest form for those who are currently ineligible for the vaccine can be found at www.mainstreetfamilycare.com slash COVID-19 vaccine. Are you looking to buy a home, but you're having second thoughts because you think it'll be a complicated process? Cross Country Mortgage, your local lender, will make everything smooth, easy, and stress-free for you. When you work with CCM, there are only six simple steps in the home buying process. Pre-approval, application, 
underwriting, conditional approval, final underwriting, and closing. That's all there is to it. Get started today with their online pre-approval application. Visit crosscountrymortgage.com slash Auburn AL 4307. Growing your business isn't just one thing. It's a million little things. Should you lease, rent, or own? How fast can you get that part? Does it fit the budget? That's what your local cat dealer is here for. With expert advice, flexible financing, and industry-leading equipment, you can get the job done day after day. Visit ThompsonCat.com, your compact equipment provider. No, 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 wrong! Bring it in, guys! Take it knee! Let's go over this again. Who starts off with a real Coke taste? Coca-Cola! And then Coca-Cola pitches the real Coke taste to who? Coca-Cola! How is Coca-Cola gonna give a real Coke taste to itself? Take a lap, genius! Coca-Cola takes a snap and then pitches the real Coke taste to Coke Zero running up on the right. You got it? Yeah! At that point, we fake punt the real Coke taste. Who fakes the punt? Coke Zero! Take a lap! Coke Zero! Real Coke taste! Zero calories! taste of the south starts out here however you roll into work you can bring the flavor with jack's breakfast catering huge scratch made buttermilk biscuits and hearty breakfast sandwiches mixed or matched starting at just 15 dollars don't forget to add delicious fresh ground royal cup coffee and classic breakfast sides because great work starts with great breakfast breakfast catering starting at 15 dollars from jack's all about the south Celebrating 10 years, you've been listening to the AHSAA Radio Network Scoreboard Show. Presented by Main Street Family Care, Southeastern Land Group, Russell Dewitt Centers, Southern Union State Community College, Cross Country Mortgage, Thompson Tractor, the Alabama Department of Transportation, and by Wickedly Delicious Wickles Pickles. Thanks for joining us here on the AHSAA Radio Network.